什么用？让我们平常的生活有用。What is the purpose of Chan practice? That it should be useful. Useful for what? Useful in our daily lives. 在平常生活里边，一种是啊，生活的技巧、技术；另外一种呢，就是生活的心态。生活的技巧，这是我们要讲的。而是生活的心态呢，是我们禅修需要啊，告诉诸位的。如果生活只有技巧而不会呃，没有啊，呃，生活的心态。就是适当的生活心态。那我我们不管是有钱没有钱，不管是生活的环境好坏，都会困扰而烦恼，哎，这就是说痛苦。What is necessary for our daily living? One. Is the skills that we need for our daily life, and two is the appropriate mental attitude in our daily lives. The skills for daily living is not what need to be said here. What Sir Wu would like to guide us through this Chan practice is appropriate mental attitude in our daily living. Without an appropriate attitude and Daily living, even with all the skills that we have, then there can still be a lot of、uh, vexations, afflictions, or suffering. On the other hand, if and Silver Space is saying that、uh, this this would be the case regardless of whether we are wealthy or not, doing well financially, regardless of the Environment that we live in, whether it is good or bad, regardless of these situations, without the appropriate mental attitude, we will still we will be having we will be experiencing these difficulties, vexations, and suffering in our daily living. Um, if we can always adjust. 自己的情绪，随时啊，能够调整自己的观念，那我们就会处处觉得会觉得很快乐啊，时时会快乐。If we can be Aware enough to regulate our concepts, ideas, and emotions that in any situation, then we will be living a life very happily in any situation. 最简单的，是调整自己情绪啊，我调整。自己的生活观念呢，那就是呼吸。当我们相当痛苦的时候，不管是受到刺激、诱惑，或者是呢自己的身体有不舒服的时候，当我们呢在这种状况下，如果能够体验呼吸，享受呼吸，其他的不要注意它。这是啊，很啊愉快的，感觉到自己还有呼吸，这是啊最大的财富
，感觉到有呼吸、啊，那至于还有生命，有生命就等于有一切，所有的幸福啊都有了。如果能够这个样子的话呢，我们只要知道有呼吸，体验呼吸，享受呼吸，就会跟烦恼、痛苦。原因也可以说就是解脱了。A very simple way to regulate or adjust our emotions or mental concept is through the method of breathing. That is, in any situation, regardless of whether we have just experienced certain setback, adverse stimulations, or temptations. Or we are in simple, simple physical discomfort. If we turn our mind to our breathing and ignore the other situations, if we turn our mind to breathing and simply experience and appreciate and enjoy our breathing, we should be aware that just being able to breathe is an enjoyment. We still have our lives when we can breathe. And that is already the greatest wealth. So when we can do that, then we can all kinds of suffering will depart from us if we can constantly have this ability to enjoy our breathing and enjoy the state that we are still alive. And in that sense, we we have our liberation. So, Sajjan Mani Khusso. 呼吸，知道呼吸，体验呼吸，是啊，能够从烦恼而智慧的入门方法，它叫做什么呢？叫做甘露门。呃，甘露的意思就是不生不灭，也就是。啊，是一种啊，天上的一种药，或者是天上的一种酒，吃了以后，或者是饮了以后啊，从此以后不再生，不再死，也就是说从生死的解脱。那可见的这个呼吸法是非常重要的。So, Sakyamuni Buddha has mentioned that to be aware of our breathing, to experience, to experience our breathing, is an entrance through the door of liberation. This door is referred to as the door of Amrita. Amrita refers to the mythical liquid from the heavens. If you have If you can experience that, if you can drink that, that gives you immortality, free from birth and death. And in other words, that is liberation. So this method to be aware and experience our breathing is very important. 呼吸的方法呢，我是不讲叫做。集中注意力，而是呢，叫名字叫做啊，意识你的呼吸，从鼻孔出入，意识从鼻孔出入啊，跟注意力集中不大一样。集中注意力是非常辛苦的事，要用头脑去集中的，而意识呢？是身体放松的，头脑是轻松的，是知道呼吸在鼻孔进、鼻孔出的感觉，很舒服、很轻松，就够了。With the method of breathing, Shri Buddha does not emphasize concentration, but rather he emphasizes 
be aware of your breathing, your inhale and exhale through the nostrils. In a very relaxed manner, just be aware of this inhale and exhale. That is adequate. Because if you were to emphasize the concentration, very often it leads to mental effort, and that is not what is suggested here. Zhihuan 是心非常平静的非常的安宁安静的所以头脑保持一片的清明的状态这个时候可能呢你已经不是在注意呼吸或者是已经呢不再意识到呼吸在这种状态就保持下去也很好So, this breathing practice can help us to stabilize our mental state, can help us to have peace, to help us to have fewer wandering thoughts, and then eventually we will not have any wandering thoughts, only breathing left, only inhale and exhale left. And then when we continue like that, Eventually, we can get to a point when we are not even aware of our breathing. The reason that we are not of our breathing at that point is because at that point, our mind is very quiet. It's a state of clear awareness. So if you get to this point, then you can just try to maintain this state and continue. If you are used to the Hua Tou method, then in this kind of condition, you can start using the Hua Tou method. Or if you are used to the silent illumination method, in this condition, you can use the silent illumination method. Yo 所以呼吸方法本身就是魔招的基础。In other situations, say if your mind is quite scattered, you can still apply the method of Hua Tou, or you can apply the method of silent illumination. But in these situations, using such methods, it will be more difficult for you to get deep into the practice. Whereas if your mind is already stable, uh, has quieted down, then using such methods will be easier for you to get into the practice. In fact, reflecting on this breathing practice, when you are simply and only aware of your breathing, that is illumination. And 
while you are aware of your breathing and you have no other thought, that is silence. So breathing practice is actually the foundation of silent illumination. Yes, uh, uh, Likewise, it is the basic method of the Huato method. Now, please start using the method. When you practice or cultivate, regardless of whether you are using the Huato method or the silent illumination method, the basic principle is the same. You don't want to be intention. You want to relax your body and mind. And the effort that you make should be stable, continuous, uninterrupted. Hwatoshan 很累 Many people have the idea that the two methods Huato and silent illumination differ in that when you apply the Huato method uh, you tend to be more tense when you apply the silent illumination method you tend to be more relaxed this notion of a difference between the two methods is really a misunderstanding what we have to note is that in the case of a very most famous master, Da Hui Zhonggao, who expounded the, who expounded the method, the Huato method, his idea is that using the Huato method is the most energy preserving approach. It's, it's, it should not be something very, ti- very exhausting, very tiring. Yo 呼吸也好，用话头也好啊，你希望用呼吸用话头来控制或者是压抑你的妄念呢，这是最吃力的事情。我们不是啊，用呼吸或者是呢用啊话头啊来压制妄念，而是呢呃不管妄念呃只管你
you recoup some energy and then your mind naturally goes to the other extreme that of uh, easy, easily being distracted and a lot of wandering thought. So, when Sifu refers to being t- intention, what he is describing is wh- whether you are using a Huato method or the breathing method, if you, when you try to use these methods to fight against the wandering thought, to suppress the wandering thought, when you take that approach, definitely you will be in tension. But that is not the correct wa- approach. You simply ignore such wandering thoughts. You do not tend to fight against them. You only have your mind on the method of practice. When you can practice like this, then your body and mind can be relaxed and your practice can go smoothly. Yeah, 可是我们用功啊这个山下流 give an analogy When you practice with tension It's like after heavy rain Lots of water, torrent of water flow into the river and the river gets flooded and overflow and, and overflow into the field and destroy the field. And then afterwards, there's no more water. But on the other hand, when you practice correctly, it is not like that kind of torrent of water from heavy mu- uh, storm uh, running down the mountain. But rather, it is like the water from the spring, which seep out from the ground and slowly flow into the water. The water flow into the river. The river never gets flooded, but it also never gets dried up. So this is the difference. And again, this kind of attitude is the same that's applied to whichever method of, of uh, silent illumination or Huato method. Now,我要简单地说明这个Huato的用的方法。Huato啊,不论你是用的是哪一种Huato,你就是在问了。问你这个Huato。问话头然后呢你希望从话头得到答案你想话头要答案而不是呢你只给他答案也不是让你思考来研究来思考来研究出答案来这答案一定不是从书本上看到的也不是你自己想象的这个答案会有可是要离开所有的
你的知识、你的学问，离开你的经验，那答案是什么呢？不知道。但是呢，你要问，一直问下去，一直问下去，这个是一个唱话头的原则。Now, Shubh would like to simply go over the principle of using the Huato method. With the Huato method, you are asking a certain question, and you aim to get the answer to this question. But this answer does not come from yourself, does not come from you trying to investigate the issue, does not trying to from your trying to. Get the answer from some of the books that you have previously read, from any of the experiences and knowledge that you might have accumulated. You, you would like the answer to come from the huato, from the question itself. So you just keep asking. There is an answer to that question, but what is it? You don't know, and yet you just keep on asking. This is the principle of the huato method. Jesu 你就从语录里边呢，好像是得到信息了，或者是解释语录的啊、呃、例子里边呢，你得到了什么答案呢、啊？这究竟是错的。那这个古人，也就是三字师门呢，古代的呃三字师门。说这个有点就就叫做舌人牙慧，或者是鹦鹉啊，鹦鹉，鹦鹉啊，变成鸟啊，鹦鹉学语，跟你自己跟你没有关系。虽然你可能得到许多的答案，许多的答案好像是这个是已经得到了。这个画出的答案，那绝对是错误的。Sometimes people try to get such answers to questions from the sayings of ancient patriarchs and masters, from various commentaries made by such、uh, people about the Gong An and Hua Tou, and they seem to get certain insight, idea from such、uh, from such books and Record of sayings and commentaries, but no matter what kind of answer you get through this approach, the answer is definitely wrong. To take this kind of approach has been compared to、uh, the parrot just imitating human people, humans talking, but is of no relevance whatsoever to the person oneself. 那为什么有语录啊？为什么有语录公案的这个解释啊？那是跟我现在讲开始是相同的功能，就是告诉大家不要相信公案的答案就是正确的，就是你的你要的答案。If that's the case. Why is it the people in the past bothered to put together these books of records? The function is really the same as Shifu giving Dharma talk now. It's to tell us people that let's not believe that we can get any kind of answer from such、uh, record of things. 有没有答案呢？我告诉诸位，有的。那个答案是什么？不知道。所以，你必须要继续的问的，问的时候你要产生疑情，疑情要变成疑团
，疑团的破了时候呢，不一定是见性，破疑团可能因为你体力不够，可能呢，因为你的妄念呢出现了，呃，所以疑团的持久，力量越大，时间越久，那你开悟的可能性越大，否则的话。这是啊，祈求吸气啊，也就是说你体力不够，那，就是玉团不见了，玉团不见了，可是呢，还是很好。在玉团的时候，你妄想是没有的，没有妄念了，你只有一句话头，这也是功夫，也很好。Are there answers to such quattos or questions? Su says yes, but what is the answer? We we don't know. But important thing is, you keep on asking. 师傅，这里那个师傅讲的答案是什么？回答。师傅说不知道。这个不知道是说修行人，因为英文讲就是不知道，有这个意思，有一种解释说，那修行本身不知道，就是问。还是说，从师傅角度，师傅不知道，不知道是答案。这个谁都不知道，我的答案不是你的答案，我不知道你的答案是什么，因为我的答案不是你的答案。当你得到答案的时候，你来告诉我啊，我来，我知道你这个答案是对错的，但是我的答案跟你的答案应该是不一样，也就是呢，因此呢。这个话头啊，呃，就是，呃，话头，参话头，参这个见性的，也就是开悟的经验呢、啊，每个人都不一样的。这过去的人，任何一个人的这个公案的呃答案呢、啊，呃，出现的时候啊，这出现一次，第二个人是同样的答案出现的话是错的。To elaborate on that point of Do not know the answer to that question. Super says because his answer to that same question will be different from yours. So he would not know what the answer, what your answer to that question would、uh, would be. When you have an answer, and you tell Sifu, Sifu can determine for you whether your answer is correct or not. But it does not mean that your answer should be or can be the same as his. For this reason, to the same question, each、uh, each person's answer to that question, if it is a genuine answer, will be different. You cannot use someone else's answer to to be your own answer. Continue with this point, Shiva says. So you just keep on asking, and until you're asking the question, generate a certain so-called great doubt, which. Becomes what we sometimes translate as a great mass of doubt, and then this great mass of doubt continues to a certain point until it either breaks or disappears. There are two possibilities. One is when it breaks, it could be an experience of seeing the self nature or empty, empty nature of emptiness. But it also can be otherwise. That is, possibly the, you don't you just Uh, do not have the energy to sustain this great mass of doubt, and it just dissipates. It leaks like、uh, like the air from a balloon gradually leaks out, and the balloon just shrinks. So, but even if this is the case, it is still good because during that period when you have that great mass of doubt, you do not have any there's no wandering thought whatsoever in your mind. So, as such, it is still. Uh, a certain accomplishment in your practice when you get this kind of great mass of doubt, even though you may not be able to sustain it for long enough time, such that the great mass of doubt has the energy to bring out an experience of enlightenment. Okay, today 早上没开始讲到这个。So this is the end of today's talk. This morning's talk.
，诸位还记得吗？智慧是什么？我们讲的智慧啊，不是西方人的呃哲学上的智慧，而是呢佛法讲的智慧，它是什么 ？People, do you still remember what is wisdom? Not in the general sense of the word, in the language, but in the Dharma sense. What? What's that? Hey, do you remember? He said, "No, he has no self-centered view." Yeah, he doesn't have the self-centered view. Everybody tells the truth. Everybody tells the truth. <音>我是说，不是智慧，不是经验，智慧不是观念，智慧不是啊,啊知识，而是呢无我的态度。我是这样子讲，所以呢也希望能够这样子说。但是呢，有智慧的人还是需要。有观念，但是用观念、用知识、用经验，那是工具。没有工具也是不行。用无我的态度来用工具，这是啊，智慧。师傅，我 suggest that people remember the。More spelled-out notion of wisdom, namely that it is not experience, it is not concept, it is not knowledge, it is simply the attitude without self-centeredness. But still, a person has a person with wisdom needs to have need to make use of knowledge, concept, and experience. And these three work as function as tools. So, a person with wisdom takes the attitude without self-centeredness, and then applies these tools of experience, of knowledge, and of concept. Without tools, that also will not work. Ah, here, please be clear. Buddhism is not a doctrine. 知识、学问、经验，而不是呢依靠啊学问、知识、经验啊，就是观念、知识和经验，不是依靠，不是依靠它为标准。So Buddha Dharma does not deny or refute. Experience, concept, and our knowledge, but it does not rely on uh, these three. 那无我究竟是什么？无我啊，是就是没有啊，嗯。无我又叫做无相，呃，相是什么呢？相是啊，一切的现象。什么现象呢？心的现象，无理的现象，和啊，这社会现象。So, in that case, what is selflessness? What is no self? Another term of that、uh, is can be translated simply as no form or no characteristic, or maybe as no phenomena or freedom from phenomena. So here, phenomena can refer to the internal psychological phenomena. 
the external physical phenomena as well as the social phenomena. And this also includes uh, all the phenomena within the uh, natural world. And from the point of view of Buddha Dharma, all of these phenomena, internal or external, psychological or physical or natural, are divided into four stages. For example, uh, the, for the physical phenomena, the four stages are the first one is the formation, the second one is uh, abiding, the third one is, you can say, deterioration, and the fourth one is emptiness. So, Wuli is the in terms of psychological phenomena, the four stages will be the arising, the abiding, the change, and the destruction. Instead of destruction, you might want to use the word extinction. Aside from these four stages, there is nothing that can be considered to be real or eternal. Whether it is the individual self or the self of the totality of the whole universe is not free from these four stages of either arising, abiding, change and extinction or formation, abiding, deterioration and emptiness. Yanchi 
或者是身啊、住啊、物理的成和住，人体、心理的身和住，这是人体。原因呢，呃，就说坏、空，或者是呢，心理的呃意、灭，这个就是啊。缘灭，缘起，缘灭。So all phenomena go through these cycles, and this this aspect, this understanding of、uh, the path of all phenomena, is what we refer to as conditioned origination and conditioned extinction. So the first two phases. The arising and the abiding of the psychological, the formation and the abiding of the physical, would be considered conditioned origination. And then the next two cycles, the change and extinction of the psychological, the deterioration and emptiness of the physical, will be considered conditioned extinction. So first, so we have origin, conditioned origination, followed by condi- conditioned extinction. And again, followed by condition origination, goes go on and on like this. This is a phenomenon. It is constant, 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 changing. Growth is a process. 空的过程之中，也在变了。没有一样东西是永远不变，而是时时刻刻都在变。那在我们的心念的也是一样，身身是一种变变起来的，身以后很快就变成了住，住以后很快就变成了变，就是意啊，就是变化。这个就是从有而变成无，就是迷，然后呢，就是灭了，消失了。所以这不管是哪个事类的现象啊，经常都在变的。不过呢，给他一个名词啊，给他一个阶段，把它啊，给他四个阶段，四个阶段这样子分开。其实这个四个阶段呢、啊，并不是啊，是那么就是啊，停止在这个阶段就不动了，是任何一个阶段也在变。所以四个阶段其实是名称。名称。但是呢，有个不有有段时间不变叫做那个。没有。但是这个现象它是从出现而到消失，它是有四个，这分成四个阶段。这四个阶段并不是说确定说啊，这个就是这个阶段就是不动的，这个阶段是不动的，没有的，不是这回事。每个阶段都是啊，都在变化。So we have these four stages, but do not misunderstand thinking that there are four durations of time when a thing or or an object or psychological phenomenon stays unchanged. But rather, all phenomena are continuously changing. So, whether, whether whichever stage、uh, this phenomenon is in, it is undergoing this process of change. It is not that there's any period of time that you can say, "Oh, now this is in this particular stage, and it will last a certain length of time in this stage before it goes on." And during this stage, it will not change. It is not like that. The, and all phenomena. Physical or psychological are continuously ever changing. 这就就是基本的佛法里面讲，就是无常。这无常的是事实，无常呢，就是一切现象的事实。如果
能够啊，接受无常的观念，然后呢，在打坐的时候啊，修行的时候，你体验到无常，体验到什么无常？体验到念的无常，心念的无常。如果你体验到心念的无常，那你也能够体验到环境是无常的。那是看听到环境环境的，就是物质现象的无常和心理现象的无常。这个时候，你就会觉得空，就会空，是什么？肯定是，是体验到空还是？体验到空。呃，体验到无常，这个空是相应的。并不等于就是啊，呃，马上就是变空心，但是呢，跟空心是相应的，因为它是无常。无常，那因此空心在哪里呢？空心在无常之中。无常的什么？无常在呃心理现象和物理现象之中。So this is the basic principle of the Dharma, that of impermanence. If we can accept this understanding of impermanence that applies to everything, and then when we practice meditation, we can experience this impermanence. We can experience this impermanence through the impermanence of our psychological phenomena, the impermanence of our thoughts. If we can experience the impermanence of our thoughts. We can also experience the impermanence of our environment. When we can experience the impermanence of the thought as well as the environment, then our mental state is in accordance with emptiness or shunyata. It does not mean that right away we can see the, the we can see self、uh, the emptiness nature or we can see shunyata. It does not mean that, but at least our mental state. Our mind would be in accordance with shunyata, and therefore we should understand that shunyata or emptiness is in the midst of impermanence. You can experience impermanence, like empty, like empty. You can experience emptiness, then you know what is empty, what is empty. You can experience emptiness. 物我了，这我也是无常的。这个我是什么？我是啊，我们的生理现象和心理现象，再加上环境的现象，把它结合而成的。主要的是心理现象，主要是心理的念头的执着，是会自我中心。自我中心执着什么？执着我身体，执着我的环境，以及执着我心里的呀。自己的价值观，那、啊、这是叫自我。但是呢，这些都是无常的，因此你就啊，晓得无我了，就是就,就无常、空、无我这三个呢连起来呀，就是叫解脱。If you can experience impermanence, then then you can experience emptiness. If you can experience emptiness, then you can also experience no self or selflessness. Because what is the self? Self is primarily the collection of these phenomena, that of the、uh, physical and the psychological, as well as the environment. But primarily, is in the Psychological phenomena, and as such, as a collection of these phenomena, we have this attachment, an attachment to our physical body, as well as attachment to our each to our own individual、uh, value system and point of view. But all of these phenomena are impermanent. So we should understand that these three ideas are very much connected. Impermanence, emptiness, and no self. The three together will lead to liberation. We say, "Everyone, you should come to the Buddha. 
但是这信念，如果这个观念不清楚，呃，无常不能体验，啊，体验到无常也不知道那是无常，那你见不了信的，那你是没有办法去解脱的，这是见的什么空性呢、啊？复性呢、啊？见不到。So if we would like to be enlightened to see the nature. But yet we do not under- have a good understanding of this concept of impermanence. Then we will not be able to experience impermanence. And even if we experience impermanence, we do- will not be able to recognize that as impermanence. And as such, we will not be able to see the nature of emptiness, nor can we attain liberation. Very important thing. Ah, that's. 打坐的时候，你体验到你的心的无常。心的无常是什么呢？就是身、住、息、灭。在我们呢，今天上午还会讲，呃，就是心的缘起、心的缘灭，我们还会讲。但是呢，你在用方法的时候。你只是体验到一点点，你不会体验的很深入，因此你还是要用观念呢来帮助你。怎么样子的观念呢？就是你不要把自我带进去，练习的，不要把自我的、自我的、是吧？自我，你一定我还在的啊，但是你不要什么事情都是我以为怎么样，我想要怎么样，我。愿意要怎么样？我现在感觉到怎么样？你随时随地啊，这个方法没有我，在那就跟所谓无相，无相啊，那就是无这个四种现象的，无相是相应，那也是跟空相应。师傅刚才有点没有没有解释到，就是因为师傅说无相，然后把相。就是各种现象的四个阶段，对，所以无相是不是应该解释一下？是，就是说这各种现象本身没有固定，不停在变，是是无相。要不然讲了那么多都是相。对，那那无相的意思就是无常的意思。OK， so it is important for us when we meditate. To try to experience this impermanence、uh, of our mental state, mental phenomena, as well as ex- ex- as well as to experience the impermanence of the environment. But initially, it is difficult for us to have any depth of experience of this impermanence. That is why we need to help. We need to use the tool of concept to guide us in our practice. And the concept is no self. What that means is, do not introduce the self into various situations in our in a、uh, do not introduce self into any situation. Of course, the self still exists at that point, no doubt about that. But do not always say that. Oh, I prefer to be like this. I think it is like this. I would like to have it like this. Do not always introduce. Uh, these ideas, this this notion of the self into the picture, and so when we can do this, then we then there's a chance that we can experience、uh, what Sufi referred to earlier as no phenomena or freedom from phenomena, which actually just means impermanence. Because Sufi started by talking about no phenomena, no phenomena, and then、uh, or freedom from phenomena, and then he went on to explain. All phenomena went through different stages. So when we use the term "no phenomena," actually it's just a very simple、uh, a su- summary statement to re- refer to the impermanence of all phen- of all phenomena. Today, 早上讲到这儿为止，请大家呢不要把自我放进去。So in a sitting. Try not to 
put the self into it. This the method of practice and there are wandering thoughts. But do not have the idea that I am using the method or that those thoughts are the same as myself. Let's repeat this idea. No doubt it is the self that is using the method of practice. But do not reaffirm this idea to you that you are using the method of practice. And again, there are all kinds of wandering thoughts, and they are all your thoughts, they are yourself. But do not carry on the notion that these thoughts are mine. I like this thought, I do not like that thought. Do not have, simply ignore who is using the method and who is having these wandering thoughts. So the morning talk, uh, this is the end of the morning talk.
，在残疾之中的时候，残疾之中的，你的状况，他的状况是个人的状况，不要啊，讲过来讲过去。The way the world will be conducting the interview will be in small groups, but since people have different experience and different background training. Are in different conditions, so you might therefore hear experiences of other people,、uh, which might be quite different from yours. But but please make sure that after the retreat, you do not want to talk about other people's experiences that you have heard during these interviews, because the conditions that may arise during a Chan retreat. Pertain just to this Chan retreat should not be、uh, discussed afterwards. And like, especially, your experience is different from others, and others different from yours. If you start talking about others' experience, others start talking about yours. That is not a very good situation. 就是同一个人，在长期之中，不同的日期，不同的时间，状况也不一样。所以啊，我们对于其他的人回答，师傅对其他的人回答的问题啊，你可以听，也许对你又是有用的。有的像相同的问题啊，相同的状况，师傅回答了他，就等于是回答了你。所以，用一个小组、一个小组、一个 group， 那对你是有帮助的。而对师傅来讲的话呢，就是节省时间。Even for the same individual, during different times of, of the retreat, there can be different conditions. So when you in this retreat, in this interview, and you can, you may listen to the way Sif responds to other people's questions,、uh, that could also be helpful to you. And if it's the same question, then if he answers the question from someone else, then he has already answered your question. So、uh, it is in this way that the This interview will be conducted, and you can benefit from the questions that others ask. And so far, as Super is concerned, that can also help him to save time. So to the、uh, interviewing of all the people here. 另外呢，小的问题，普通的状况，一般的状况，也就是不说小的问题啊，一般的状况啊。我们有果园法师和江母两个人呢，替你们解决问题。还有啊，啊 ，Simon，Simon Simon, 一共三个人替你们呢，一人小餐。通常的问题他们都能解答，没有问题。到我这儿来，不是问我一些普通的、通常的问题。而是你在修行的过程中，就是在这个这个产期之中啊，有特别的状况，或者是特别的特殊的经验呢，告诉我，让我来告诉你下一步怎么办，或者是呢，让我告诉你。你这个经验啊，是啊，怎么样？不是啊，说跟我见面，不是的，一些通常的问题在问我，呃，或者，那我就要他们另外三个人给你们小小餐，就等于没有用了。那什么事情到我来解解答？
师傅解答的问题，一定是比较啊，呃，他们三个人都没办法解答的。那我来解答。A thing to note is the questions that you ask Shifu in this interview should be should have to do with some special situations of yours during the retreat. That is. Ordinary questions about your practice in the retreat, uh, you you should be able to address those questions to Guo Yan Fa Shi, to John Crook, and to Simon. They should be able to ha- answer most of these questions. The questions that you bring to Shifu should have to do with some special experience that you have had during this retreat, so that you can tell Shifu of your experience, and Shifu can tell you. What your next step should be, or Shifu can tell you what kind of condition ah uh, ah uh, that is ah uh, whatever your experience is. So you should ask only those questions that typically ah、uh, the other three may not be able to answer very well. Otherwise, it will be pointless for Shifu to ask ah、uh, the other three people to provide interview for you people. 所以见我的时候，其实要问我的问题是非常单纯，应该也很少的，呃，不会很多。呃，我跟你们小强，我不是跟你们对话，而是呢，给你们判断状况和解决困难的问题。So when you meet Shifu, there should not be too many questions. That is not a session for a dialogue between you and Shifu. Shifu is just going to take the opportunity to determine for you what your condition is and provide answers to, to certain questions. 好，现在我们先今天呢讲今天的开始啊。昨天。我们讲的缘起，讲的空，讲无常，又讲的见性，啊，继续还讲。Okay, now we'll start today's talk. Yesterday, Shifu spoke on conditioned origination, emptiness, impermanence, and seeing the nature. Today, he will continue. 缘起呢，在在佛经里边呢，在二汉经的所讲的，以及大圣经典所讲的，还有大圣呢的论点所讲的，缘起思想。应该是一贯的，一贯的思想，但是呢，有不同的说明和解释法，所以最早叫做一感愿起，然后呢？有阿赖耶识缘起，阿赖耶缘起啊，然后有如来藏的复性的缘起，最后啊，有啊，是清净心，也就是法界缘起，清净心缘起，就是法界缘起。在一共有四个层次啊，也可以说，就是佛法有四个阶段的这样的缘起，听起来、看起来好像是不同的，但是呢，就是观念上啊，的解释不一样而已，但是事实上是相同的。如果不相同，那就不是佛法。
师傅，第二是阿赖耶缘缘起没问题，第三是我叫做福星缘，福星如来藏缘起啊，对，如来藏，但是师傅也说也也就是如来藏缘起，真如缘起，但是福星缘起是有,有用，刚才提到这个，对，就是同样的东西，所以福星如来藏真如是同样的东西，对，但是哦。Conditioned origination, as described in the arguments of, uh, we can say, the original Buddhism text, and as well as the sutras and discourses of the Mahayana text, the idea contained, discussed there, are consistent among the various uh, scriptures. Yet. The way of explanation and the terminologies used are somewhat different. For example, in the uh, in the argument, the term used is uh, can be translated as condition arising or condition origination based on karma. And then this is the first first type of description. And then later in the Mahayana text, there's uh, Conditioned origination based on alaya, alaya referring to alaya consciousness. And then later there is a, a conditioned origination based on the target of uh, gaba, or actually we also use the term Buddha nature. Buddha is ta ta ta. Or conditioned origination based on ta ta ta. And then Finally, the fourth uh, category would be condition origin origination based on pure suchness. So, pure suchness, or dhamma dhatu. So, these are four ways to describe this condition origination. The terminologies are different, but what is said is really the same. If they are not the same. Then it would not really be Buddha Dharma. Now, I from Ohan so Jang de Yuan Qi. It is the Dong Guan is the same. Same. That Yuan Qi is Jang. Only Gu Gu Bi Yu. Is only Gu Bi Yu. 生、老、病、死、集，那就是苦集。生、老、病、死、集，再加个集。集，就是苦集。那到底“苦集”两个字？生、哦、老、病、死就是苦。嗯、由于此此生苦比生，啊，此有苦比有啊，此有苦比有，生、老、病、死、集。此无故，彼无生老病死，没。这是呢，基本的呀，这《二含经》的呀，就是缘起思想。Now, contained within the argument, the fundamental ideas of condition origination is in consistence with the view of our.、Uh, Madhyamika. The basic idea here is: this arises, therefore that arises. Birth, old age, sickness, death, accumulate. And then this arises, uh, this ex- extinguishes, and therefore that extinguishes. Birth, old age, sickness. That extinguishes. So here, the four terms, uh, birth, old age, sickness, and death, obviously refer to suffering. The first of the four noble truths. So what Shri Buddha is saying is, this arises and that arises. Therefore, suffering and the collection of the these causes of suffering. And then Shri Buddha went on to say, this you can say disappears or. Extinguishes and therefore that extinguishes and therefore the suffering 
are also extinguishes. Kuji Suimea Samo or Kuji Kumi Suimea Samo or Kumi Kuji Suyu Uyo Fanaud Wumin Kasada Wumin Yuan Xing Yes,是圆明,是。这个圆呢,我们昨天就已经讲,这个圆就是对象。圆是对象。圆呢,就是产生自我的。自我的什么自我的烦恼心呢就动的时候自我的执着分别心动的时候就是圆圆什么有对象啊圆静而有动心动是否这意思不省心因为比如说无名圆心 现在告诉你无名它本身呢那是什么东西因为有形形呢一般的人认为行为的行啊其实不是行呢就是无论里面那个行问行问就是一种心理的现象行问可以出可以吸出的就是受就是想受而受想受和想是出的虚的行为呢就是念头的呀念头的什么念头的变迁念念头的持续这是行所以现在师父解释不愿意你的行要是出的行就是另外两两念受想都叫出对那是的就是念头变迁对那跟这个变迁和持续而持续颜色的是下边的认识的是在下边啊就产生了分别心了产生了下边的不是分别心这不是是是生命的呀生命的主体就是认识的是啊这个认识的是你现在先把这个行讲我还没讲啊是先无名的动无名本身没有什么东西无名就是一种啊潜在的力量但是呢由于心的动那就是无名的力量就发生了就是无名是一旋一行而产生力量的无名是因为行而产生力量的是行是因为色而产生力量的就下去了哦这样子好像是相反的对相反的不是因为因为有无名所以是有行不是这样的哦所以师父 oh, is explaining Earlier it was mentioned the Four Noble Truths, the suffering and the collection of the cause of suffering. Now, how do these arise? Then, they will use, use the terminologies of the 12 links of cause and conditions to describe that. And you might have heard they will use the word Yuan quite a few times. And that was the same Yuan that we've been talking about the last few days. Yuan as in conditions as in co- condition origination. Also, uh, yuan as used in the verb in, of the subject-object uh, relationship. Now, the first link is ignorance. The second link, typically translated as volition, but the meaning is really not just conveyed by the word volition. It ex- uh, explains that. And then the third is consciousness. 
Okay, how do we understand the term volition? Uh, sometimes some people just misunderstand thinking volition because in Chinese it happens to be the same character that refers to action, thinking that it's just action. But really, volition, they're the coarse kind and the subtle kind. The coarse kind actually includes the other two standards of the five standards, that are sen sensation and perception. And the subtle kind refers to the changes as well as the continuity of one's mental thought or mental activity. So, having explained what volition is, now let's talk about ignorance. Ignorance is not something concrete. As we can only explain it as some potential energy. And how does this ignorance become activated? It becomes activated or be through this volition. It is through this volition that the ignorance actually manifests and has energy. And likewise, volition has this uh, gets activated or has energy through consciousness. So you see, this the way Shiva is describing actually seems almost seems to be the reverse of what people you should understand by these uh, twelve links of cause and condition. Yu 由于缘下一步，所以呢，上一步产生力量；由于下一步，所以上一步产生力量，都是这样子下去的。师傅，那个四字应该用生命主体还是分别意思来讲？生命主体，不是分别意思。这地方的，呃，不是分别意思，不是
生命的形成的过程，一个生命的流转的过程。这里边通常讲十二个因缘呢、啊，呃，但是最早有讲六缘，六缘，后来讲九缘。最后才讲十二元，是这个实际上就是生命的啊、呃、无名形，呃，然后呢形成生命的主体的色，然后就生老病死，死了以后又再来，啊、呃，死了以后呢，根据这一生之中的一。是既成功的色，啊，既成功，既成功的那个色啊，又去投胎去。In the arguments, when are、uh, the the term conditioned origination primarily refers to the process of one's life. In fact, ah,、uh, we typically know of the twelve links of causing conditions or conditioned origination. The original teachings on that spoke of only six lengths, and then eventually it evolved into nine lengths, and then it evolved into twelve lengths. But the basic point is there's the ignorance, volition, consciousness, and then the process of birth, old age, sickness, and death. And then at one's death, the accumulations of the karma of one's activities throughout the lifetime are、uh, accumulated in the consciousness. Which goes into a next life cycle. This one, we call the suffering and the suffering. The suffering and the suffering are constant. Ah, that is, ah, there are many suffering. Suffering stages, 这，呃，就是永远呢，就是在生死之中嘛，这叫生死的缘起。So when we talk about the four noble truths, the first two, suffering and the and the collection of the cause of suffering. So if you, if you understand this point, this arises and that therefore that arises. So we have the suffering and that itself leads to the Collection of causes of suffering, and after causes have been collected, it leads to further suffering. Further suffering leads to further collection of, for further causes of suffering. So this goes, this cycle goes on and on and on. Because Sutta Mani Fo, he points out that after such a fact, he tells us. 要如何的呀？断疑、迷苦，如何的断疑，也是从此以后不造了。三十一，迷苦是用智慧啊来迷苦，智慧产生呢，就是我们失正无常和无我。那就是智慧显现，那就是解脱，那就变成就叫做此无故必无。Therefore, the teachings of Shakyamuni Buddha was to cut off this term, this accumulation of the cause of suffering, and then to eliminate suffering. Thank you for listening. 